I sort of fell in love with the country. I could see the roots of our own country over there, and I could see amazing things. I mean, the UK today, it is Great Britain. It really is great. But it is the legacy of the greatest empire the world has ever seen. I mean, you could say that the Mongols were great and the Romans were great, and both of those things are true. But I think the British Empire was the greatest empire, the largest, richest, most powerful empire that ever existed in history. And although the empire has been dismembered, um, much of the greatness, greatness remains, and there's so many things about that country to admire, I believe. Uh, but their politics has been atrocious. They have a nominally conservative government, has been for 14 years, called the Tories as well. But there is nothing Justin Trudeau has done that they have not done as Tories. They've brought in transgender extremism. They are deeply committed to net zero environmental extremism. They have open borders uh, similar in scale to we do, that we do. And of course, they have little dinghies and boats sailing over from France uh, claiming asylum, even though obviously France is a free and safe country. There are so many appalling things in the UK. And what irks me about it, it was all done in the name of the Conservative Party, name of the Tory party. And so that party's name is mud. But what are you going to do about it? Because the leading opposition party is the Labour Party, that on each of the issues I just mentioned is worse and far worse and worse on it on and some things are spectacularly worse and they would be very troubling for example from the point of view of um in aligning the uk more with the hamas islamic extremism so what's a freedom-oriented nationalist populist voter to do what's someone to do if the tories have had open borders for 14 years and the labor will obviously continue. Who are you going to vote for? What can you do? I saw a poll, I mentioned it to you before, that, uh, and it was just one poll, and it may have been a rogue poll, but that only 1% of young people in the UK plan to vote Tory. 1%, even if that was off and it was 5%, uh, imagine how disheartening it is. And that's for a lot of the same reason that here is in Canada. Young people cannot afford a home. If you think prices are expensive in Toronto, try London. And the reason for that is the millions of mass migrants who have come. Um, and I think there's another reason. The Tories installed their new leader. He has never been voted on by grassroots members of the party. It was sort of like a palace coup. And so Rishi Sunak, uh, a gazillionaire, uh, is the leader of the party. But he has the feeling sometimes of being like a globalist banker who doesn't understand anything real, it just talks about GDP. And I understand why GDP is important, but I think it's important to an ordinary person to earn money, not, well, if we just, um, you know, reduce services and bring in more migrants, we can get the GDP to grow by points. Like, like he's a technical technocrat who has all the humanity of an artificial intelligence. Like if, I feel when I'm watching Rishi Sunak that I'm watching an AI creation of a person. Here's an old clip of him showing just how privileged and out of touch he is, where he says, I have friends who are aristocrats, I have friends who are upper class, I have friends who are lower class, working class. Oh, <laughs> not them. Take a look at this. Friends who are aristocrats, I have friends who are upper class, I have friends who are, you know, working class, but I'm not working class, but I mix and match. He's just so disconnected from people. And some of the funniest ads in this campaign have been him in normal situations being so awkward, like going to soccer or football, as they call it. Here's a clip of that. I mean, th these are political ads criticizing him, but it's tapping into something about him, which is he is so unlikable and unrelatable. But what are you going to do about it? Here's, here's how his opposition depicts him. Is he looking forward to all the football? Not so much my bag. But well, let's get people in. No, but that's because you guys aren't in it. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, let's get people out. You know, there'll be people coming. It'll be good but summer. Come support fall. England, yeah, at least. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, what suit? Yeah, that's right. I'm Rishi. What's your name? Dean. Dean. How are you? Hungry. Hungry. Well, this, we hope we get you to good breakfast. Thank you. Know, would you like sausages? Yeah. Yeah. 
Some toast? Yeah. Perfect. A yeah. couple of eggs? Yeah. Fantastic. Now you've been here before, have you? I have, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a great place, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's a superb job. Right, that's that. That's some cutlery. Let me get with the economy out. Well, that is exactly what I'm trying to do. Exactly what I'm trying to do. Uh, there's for business. What, what do you have? A, you, do you work in a business? Do you want some no, fruit? No, I'm, I'm homeless, and I'm actually a homeless person. But I'm interested in this. Rishi talks tough about immigration, but more boats come every day. Uh, Rishi has been an endorser of Net Zero. The United Kingdom has been a very bellicose point of view in the Ukraine-Russia war. And according to several diplomats who were there, it was the UK that scotched a peace deal that could have been had over a year ago. One of the traditions of the British Conservative Party is a strong military. For years, the British had a mighty military. I mean, for centuries, they had the most powerful navy in the world. They've practically been demilitarized, although they talk very butch about the war with Ukraine and Russia, they have demilitarized themselves. It's a surveillance state now. There's closed circuit TV everywhere, and not just for fighting crime, but for fighting against environmental crimes. They have something there called ULEZ, Ultra Low Emission Zones, or 15-minute cities where they have these cameras that spy on cars driving where they're not supposed to drive. By the way, it's it's led to a underground <laughs> a phenomenon called Blade Runners, people who are masked, sort of sneak out with a, a metal saw, a hacksaw, and cut down these uh, ULEZ surveillance cameras. It's quite something. And of course, the conservatives were very strong into lockdownism, although, of course, they cheated themselves. So my point is, the United Kingdom's Tory party was utterly uninspiring, the opposite of Pierre Polyev's conservative party in Canada. Labour is awful, and they will be worse if they win. Here's an example of Keir Starmer, the Labour leader, when he was asked, which do you prefer, Westminster, which is what they call their Houses of Parliament, or Davos, as in the World Economic Forum? Like any politician should know what to say. Well, he answered with his heart. Let's just ask you quickly, you have to choose now between Davos or Westminster. Davos. Why? <laughs> because Westminster is too constrained, um, and... You know, it's closed and we're not having meaning. Once you get out of Westminster, whether it's Davos or anywhere else, you actually engage with people um, that you can see working with in the future. Westminster is just a, a tribal shouting place. By the way, there are forces pulling Keir Starmer's Labour Party even further to the left. There are Islamic groups. George Galloway has a pro-Hamas, pro-Gaza political party that's stripping away voters from the left of the Labour Party. There were candidates in recent council elections who campaigned with Palestinian flags, and they won. It's totally demoralizing. And then in comes Nigel Farage, out of nowhere. The election had actually started, and he said, no, I'm just going to be a journalist on GB News. No. He decided to jump in. He, Nigel Farage, the former leader of the UKIP party, the UK Independence Party, he was the guy who led the campaign to get the UK out of the European Union, to save the pound as opposed to the euro, and get it out of the European Union. He was the guy who, for his politics, was debanked. Uh, a bank called Coots Bank wrote to him and said, we refuse to have your business. And then they lied about it and he fought them. And he struck a blow for ordinary people not being debanked. He's made a personal uh, project to go out into the English Channel on boats and film those bogus refugees in their boats streaming over to the UK every day. He has been on these issues but more importantly, he's a normal human being. He's fun, even. He's, he's goofy in a, in a way that he owns whatever goofiness is. I mean, take a look at this. This is one of my favorite little ads he has. Um, you know, the, the rapper from Detroit, Eminem, here's, here's the most unwrap, un-Detroit guy imaginable, Nigel Farage, having a little fun at, at his own expense. Take a look. How is he not likable? And, and I think there's this whole team of young voters who think he's so much fun as opposed to Rishi Sunak, the robot. There's a kid's video game called Minecraft 
Um, and they had some deep fakes of Nigel Farage playing Minecraft and taking on the other party leaders. It, it may sound obscure, but it's just so goofy and it shows how he's connecting with young people. Like I say, only 1% of young people care about resisting next conservatives. Here's that Minecraft bit. Hello, chat. So today I had the brilliant idea of joining Rishi's Minecraft server while he was offline just to have a bit of fun and mess with him. So after exploring the world for a bit, I've actually stumbled upon his house. So naturally, I filled it to the brim with TNT. And for everyone's information, there were absolutely no trace of Sky TV services in or around the house. Wait, what does this say? Nigel, if this is you, do not grieve my house. Well, sorry, Rishi. I think you can agree. It's too late for that, my friend. Anyway, let's get to it, shall we? Right, three, two, one. Okay, let's get out of here. And just for good measure, I'm going to blame it on Keir. And what I like best about Nigel Farage is he's used to fighting back against the media. His chief opponents for 30 years have been the, uh, the media. So when they criticize him for taking a hard line on immigration, it's, he doesn't get scared. He claps back. Mm -hmm.